Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather, and in this video, we're talking all about the splitting machine. So, like a lot of leather work tools, the splitting machine has been named quite literally, as its job is to split down leather into thinner pieces. Now there are some variations between brands, but most splitting machines are going to consist of the blade, a roller, a handle and a depth adjustment. Now the one I have here in the workshop is from Joseph Dixon, who unfortunately are no longer in business, but you can sometimes pick one up second hand on eBay, and Osborne Tools make some very good alternatives in various sizes. When it comes to setting up the splitter, they're meant to be used so that they hang over the edge of your workbench. So mine is directly mounted onto the bench but sits on top of some wood just to raise it up a bit which allows easier access to the adjustment dial at the bottom of the machine. Now if for whatever reason you don't want to have it permanently attached to your desk that is absolutely fine. You can mount it onto some wood and use a clamp for when you are using it similar to what I have done on my burnishing and sanding machine. And when you don't need it, you can easily remove it and put it somewhere out of the way. Once you have your splitter mounted, we can set up the other elements. Like I said, there are some variations between the brands, and the main one is that the knife is aligned to the center of the roller on my Dixon's machines, but this is the opposite on the Osborne 86 machine, where you align the roller to the knife. But all we need to do is make sure that the blade is in line with the center of the roller. Once the blade is centered, you can then adjust the depth gauge. Now on my Joseph Dixon ones, this is done with a dial at the bottom of the machine. And on the Osborne 86 splitter, there is a thumb screw underneath. And what this does is move the roller up or down depending on what thickness you want your leather to be. And on my one, I have also added this handy sticker to stop me from going the wrong way. Now you know how to set up your splitter, you need to know how to maintain it. So easy things to do are oiling things that require movement, so on mine this is around the depth guile and on the springs that move the roller in and out. Another thing that is important is to keep the roller clean and smooth for accurate and even splits. As leather is waxy, especially bridal leather, this will transfer onto the roller and you want to clean this off every now and again. As mine is brass, I'll be using the Brasso Brass Cleaner to remove the wax and get the roller nice and shiny again. Like any knife, for the best performance, the blade needs to be nice and sharp. If your blade is really dull or damaged, then we're going to need to start out on an oil stone. Now, over time, oil stones can wear, so we just need to check that this is nice and flat first. You can see here what I mean. This dark stone is very worn in the center, so the blade is not touching and would therefore not sharpen evenly. Whereas on this stone, the blade is in contact the whole way along and we can use this stone knowing that our blade is going to be worked nice and evenly. As this is an oil stone, we need to start out by adding some oil and then we can start working our blade. Now you can start on either side, but my preference is to do the cutting side first and we need to make sure that we keep the original shape and angle of the blade. We can place this face down onto the stone and then rock it forward until the blade is in contact with the stone. We can then work the blade along the stone, making sure we work the whole of the blade. And you can do this by pulling the blade diagonally towards you or lengthways on the stone. The key thing here is to keep the blade at the same angle and make sure you work the whole length of it. So pick the method that you find easiest and use that. Once we have done the top side of the blade, we can flip it over and work the flat side. So here we want to keep the blade as flat as possible and again work the whole length of the blade. Now, as I said earlier, you're really only going to use the oil stone if the blade is really dull or has somehow got damaged. So the next step is what I would do to regularly maintain the blade and that is using some fine grit wet and dry paper and the strop board. So what we're going to do is repeat the method used in the last step and work the whole of the blade. We can do this on either the fine wet and dry paper or on the strop board. And now you should have a nice super sharp blade. Now your splitter is all set up and sharp, we can get using it. There are a range of reasons to split leather and most of the time you will be splitting the flesh side down to reduce the thickness of straps for looping or for belt lining, for example. 
and you can use it to even out minor discrepancies in the thickness of leather because remember it is a natural product. You can also use this splitter for really fine splits for covering press dusts or for my favourite square and double raised work. Depending on what you are splitting will depend how you want to set the blade and I will always do a test first to make sure the machine is set how I want it to be before splitting my actual project. For straps that are going to be used as lining on belts or for looping, I generally don't need to use the whole strap so I can test on one end whilst dialing in my settings. For when I am splitting the grain off, I will use an off cut first of the same leather to make sure the blade is set correctly. When I am doing these splits, I generally cannot split the flesh side off first to make sure that the leather is 100% even all the way along. So I will keep a close eye on the leather coming off to make sure that it isn't getting too thick or too thin. Now if you're happy to split the leather down first to make the strap even, you can do, but for my dog collars I want to keep that flesh side intact and this is just my personal preference. There is one main limitation that I find with this machine and that is that even though the cutting blade is over 6 inches long, the wider the strap the harder it is to split. And I find that the limit for me is about 3 to 3.5 three inch wide straps. But other than that, this is a simple machine with one job to do and it does it very well. So I hope that you found this video helpful and you enjoyed watching. If you did, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials and I shall see you in the next video.